Hello, my name is Jamie and today we're going to do something a little different. So I'm making a painting video. In this case of the green obelisk. I designed this model using CAD Query, which is a 3D modeling library written in Python. And this is the particular obelisk that we're going to be painting in this video. You can get these models on Cults 3D printables or Thingiverse for free. To go with the open nature of this project, this is the code, or at least the instantiation of the particular one that we're going to be working with today. Right there's the parameters for the object. And so if you wanted to modify the model or change uh, height or different parameters, this is, this is an example of how you could do that. All right, on to painting. So here's the model. It's been primed black. And we're going to start painting it. And here I'm making a wet palette. I'm going to cut up some paper towels. Just use a, a cheap takeout food container. Normally you'd use parchment paper. In this case, I'm using uh, construction paper. I'm experimenting with that. And I tend to prefer it for the moment. Add water, so the paper towel acts as a sponge, and the construction paper or parchment paper acts as a medium between the paint and the sponge, so it doesn't just seep in. I'm going to paint the model using cheap craft store paints. First step is dry brushing with green. You'll note I'm using a makeup brush for doing this dry brush. And I put it on my hand in order to test the paint for consistency. You'll see here that I'm starting to get a little bit more aggressive with the dry brush, adding uh, direction strokes and making areas heavier in paint than others. Using the makeup brush makes that uh, very fast, especially for terrain. And it gives you um, more control. Okay, model done. Or that's where at least I would like to tell you I stopped. <laughs> I struggled quite a bit with this model. And if I, if I was uh, a little bit more confident with it, I probably would have stopped some of my steps here because I actually quite like the model at this point. Here I'm starting to mix in a brighter green, in this case it's called Dew Green, and it's kind of this pastel green. So the idea is starting to come together for how I want to approach this model. Um, originally I was going to go for kind of a, a wood elf uh, browns, maybe a wood pattern, and I leaned heavily into this kind of green crystal uh, paint job after I did the uh, We're experimenting, right? We're trying out new things, seeing how it works. And in these early stages, like I said, I, I quite liked how this worked. And as you can see, as you'll find out later, that I, I struggled a lot. We're trying to get the gradients going how I wanted them to. So I've mixed the paints. We've got you know our low tone, our mid tone, and our high tone. And I'm trying to figure out how I want to work these gradient areas because I've, I've more or less blocked the colors out. And now we're just trying to build upon the gradients. 
Here I'm doing blotching. That had mixed effects. It's good to do for, like, um, weathering effects. Uh, I don't know if this worked out well or not. I'm trying, to, I'm trying different blend techniques, right? So upcoming, here's a good goof. So first sign of trouble, you see I just ripped paint off. That's part of the reason why I use the um, uh, blow dryer in order to try to dry the pigment in between. So here I'm trying to glaze in order to uh, blend the gradients. So I'm taking the my low tone green, mixing it heavily with water, and then going over my uh, high tone and mid tones with it, and trying to um, equal normalize out the pigment so that the gradient isn't as harsh. So this bit actually gets a little bit interesting. So this is where I start doing some actual wet blending. So we start getting our mid-tone, our low-tone, our mid-tone, and our high-tone, and they're all still wet on the model. And I'm actually starting to blend them. So I'm getting a, a stronger idea of what the gradients will be. For the most part, I kind of um, struggled figuring out the direction of where I was going to go. And we're kind of in that mid-stage where the model looks terrible. <laughs> That's how you know you're onto something good, is if you're in the middle of painting it and you hate it. Uh, because it just means that you have uh, more work to go. Where the opposite effect is if you're painting something and you absolutely love it, it's probably best not to continue going. <laughs> Move on to a different part. So as the blends start getting cleaner, I start hating the dark spots more and more, right? Uh, because they look more messy. And you can start seeing some of the stuff I'm doing for the actual wet blends. And so I start liking those, but then the rest of the model's looking more, more rough, right? And that's a general gist is I'll start in with a dry brush and then from there on, I'll move on to basically cleaning up the dry brush. Use the, use the, the dry brush to, to block out the model, to set up the overall theme, and then uh, start cleaning it up there so it looks less rough, right? It's starting to come together. Um, that, that's a, an overall theme with this video is I, I have trouble finding direction with this model. All right, so now is where I start getting into trouble. So we're going to try to redo the dark spots. And <laughs> it's it's going to go from uh, bad to worse for a bit. So here I'm starting to glaze in the darker black color in order to block out the dark areas more. And basically we're doing a reset. So for all the dark areas, we're going to clean that up and put it in this uh, black glaze effectively. And it's, yeah, <laughs> not, this, not my strongest moment, let's put it that way. This in particular is a clean brush. So I've got two brushes, one loaded with paint and the other one just with water in order to clean up the rough spots, right? Where I'm getting, getting paint where I don't want it. So I use the clean brush in order to remove the paint, you know, overspilling. At this point, I'm questioning my life's choices. Because <laughs> it looks awful. Um, so we're going to try to recover this effectively. So where I put my darks, it obviously went too dark. Uh, I'm trying to work out the differentiation between the gradient and between the dark spots. And if anything else, this is a good lesson in what not to do. So here we're starting to put in our glazes. At this point, I'm trying to blend the black with the, the green gradients. So 
So we're starting to overlap the colors again. Here I'm trying to rescue the model by putting a green glaze over the whole thing so that my dark spots aren't as dark and that my high spots aren't as high. We're basically trying to desaturate the model a bit. Now I'm going to try to mix in some colors. So we're adding purple to the dark spots. Another round of glazing to try to um, lower the contrast between the colors. These are the line highlights. This is when the model actually starts coming back together again. Is by getting in this uh, this detail, you can start start getting an overall picture. We're we're, we're starting to move away from the. Um, uh, incessant work on the gradients. So line work is done and then building out the gradients again back to it for the the purples. Now we're moving on to blues. So sort of building out the colors a bit. Have some more have some more variety. Adding a glaze. And this is the pull the colors back together. Now it gets exciting. Um, at this point, I'm actually happy with how the, the gradients worked out, and we're adding in detailing. So in this case, I looked up some um, Lord of the Rings writing, just via Google search, and just started adding in um, uh, elven writing. And the, there's no particular meaning behind it. It's just <clears throat> stuff, design, designs that look nice, right? In particular, I'm happy with my freehand here. Um, it's doing pretty, pretty well for steadiness. Doing this kind of stuff can be very taxing. Start working in some highlight colors on the writing. So I put writing on two of the sides, um, and the, the the reason for that is just try not to one make it not not too much. Right? <laughs> a little goes a long way, right? Um,
one way I could have made the, the writing stand out more <clears throat> is if I had done the writing originally in black and then uh, added the highlight colors on top of that black outline, right? So each each letter would be outlined in black, right? So then the, the bright colors uh, wouldn't fade in as much. All right, so here is the, the obelisk against a painted miniature. So you get a sense of scale. And here's some pictures of the finished model. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.